Space Ventura 2 When Nature Calls, released in 1995 and is directed by Steven Odekirk, who is also directed such films like Nothing to Lose, Kung Pao Enter the Fist, and Barnyard. And this film is starring returning to his glory, of course, Jim Carrey, Ian McNeese, Simon Callow, Menard Elijah, and Bob Gunton. And the reason why we're talking about Ace Ventura 2 today is because it was a PayPal recommendation and donation from one of my contributors and supporters of this channel, Dr. Camp. Thank you very much for this recommendation. If any of you out there also have recommendations or you want to help support me and contribute to this channel, you can make a PayPal donation by clicking on the PayPal link that is on the homepage of my YouTube channel. Any size donation will do. And if you have a movie recommendation, please attach it with your donation. And if I have access to it, I will watch it, review it, and give you a little shout out. Just look what I did with Dr. Camp here. And Ace Ventura 2, I think, is a very worthy sequel and maybe a controversial take, but I think this one surpasses the first. The prologue to this movie excluded. Ace Ventura has been called upon again to save a lost animal. But unlike the first Ace Ventura film, Ventura finds himself called to the wild lands of Africa to where he can let loose with all of the animals in the animal kingdom. And hopefully he finds the animal soon because the absence of this animal will soon cause two rival tribes to wage war against each other, inevitably causing both sides doom. And while I complimented the first Ace Ventura film in being great because of its simplicity and its contained story, here we get Ace Ventura in the Animal Kingdom. We get Ace Ventura, this pet detective, this person who is able to really communicate with animals and understand animals, gets to do that with so many different animal species. And as a kid, this is what I wanted from the first Ace Ventura movie after I watched it, of course, to understand who this character was. I wanted to see this character in his natural habitat. I wanted to see him with all kinds of animals. So here he is with crocodiles, monkeys, lions. He's birthed out of a rhino butt. I mean, come on. One of the best, weirdest, and most inappropriate scenes ever in the history of movies is him in that rhino little robot. The AC breaks down. He can't get out, but he sees the little opening in the asshole of the rhino covering just pushing himself out and the fact that the people on the safari are like oh oh look the rhino's giving birth how beautiful the fact that they stood there for several minutes not realizing that that was a human coming out of the butt <laughs> i love that scene so much it's fantastic and that's just one of the many great scenes that this movie lends itself to jim carrey is at his best again they just let him do what he wants to do and what he thinks is funny and almost everything this movie is, again, except for that fucking prologue. In 1993, there was a Sylvester Stallone movie that was released called Cliffhanger that began very similarly to this movie where they were rock climbing and they were going on a zip line across the thing, but then one of the inexperienced people, their chain broke, so Sylvester Stallone comes out to the middle of the rope grabs hold of them because now they're just dangling there and she just slowly slips out of his hand. So he washes her fall to her death and it's traumatizing for him to where he'll never hang off a cliff again. This movie did the exact same thing, only Ace Ventura was trying to save a raccoon. <sighs> Which I've said it before on here, I'm, I'm an animal lover. Like, don't hurt animals in my movies or else I get angry. Like, if you recommend a movie and there is, like, a dog death or a cat death in it, I, I will not watch it. I just can't watch it. I just can't take that in my movies. John Wick excluded, I just can't take that in my movies. So having to relive the prologue of this movie, that heart-wrenching, bad taste of a prologue for this freaking movie was heartbreaking for me. I hate that prologue. When I was a kid, I used to just start this movie after all of that. Like, I purposely fast forward through all of it. I don't want to watch it. And just hearing the little screeches and the screams. And you just want to, you want to hold the raccoon. You want to help him. But you can't. Like, okay, I'm going to stop talking about it. Because I hate it. If that prologue wasn't in this movie, this would be one of my favorite comedies of all time, hands down. But because it's there, it's not. The rest of the movie, though, does make up for it. Because there is a lot a lot of great lines in here. The whole shakaka bit is fantastic. Shakaka. Shakaka. Shakashin. Ah. Shish kebab. Shawshank Redemption. Shakaka. Go. 
You're out of there! Go on. You're gone. Go on. Go on out. They have Guano! Ah! 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 Boondaba! He exclaimed with great relish. Now this movie came out in 1995 and it was coincided with the release of the animated TV show, if any of you remember that, if any of you are that old like me and you remember that cartoon, which also released around the same time as the Mask animated series. So this movie was trying to ham up everyone and try to be a little bit more cartoonish to make everyone go watch that cartoon, which I guess lasted longer than I thought. I thought it only lasted for a season, but apparently it had three seasons. I looked it up, they're like, oh, wow, that's impressive. From 95 to 2000 interesting. I wasn't expecting that. So there's a lot of cartoonish acting from Jim Carrey in here, but you know what? That's who Ace Ventura is. He's a cartoon. He's a live living cartoon character who is very intelligent, very smart, who's always trying to do the right thing, and has a sense of trying to parody a bunch of previous detective films that we have seen as an audience many years previous to this movie. The whole torture scene with the knife and fork on the plate and then when he's poking his eye, that's hilarious, playing off of like old war movies that had a whole bunch of torture scenes. We will ask the questions! The movie all just rests on the amazing comedic genius shoulders of Jim Carrey. This character, this franchise, it just can't be done without him. I hear that there's rumblings of an Ace Ventura 3 being made, or at least in development, over at Amazon Prime. If you can get Jim Carrey to come back for an Ace Ventura 3, I know he joked about it recently, like in the last year, saying like, I'd only do it if Christopher Nolan directed the film. I mean, okay. Hear me out, Jim Carrey returning as Ace Ventura, directed by Christopher fucking Nolan. I mean, come on, I would watch that movie. I think Christopher Nolan would want to make that movie. I think we should make it happen, God damn it. Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls, many people think it's less than than the first Ace Ventura film. For me, this one surpasses it because there's way more jokes, hilarious jokes that, even though at many points they just seem to be there, they're still hilarious enough to where I just love seeing this character and his mannerisms, the way he walks, the way he pronounces things, his cadence in his speech. I just love this character and I love this movie, except for that fucking prologue. This movie is hilarious. I'm gonna give Ace Ventura When Nature Calls 4 out of 5 Blu-rays. I like it a lot. So guys, if you've seen Ace Ventura When Nature Calls, what did you think about it? Which do you prefer? Do you prefer the second or do you prefer the first? Whatever you thought, comment below and let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell. See you the next time I'm released next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time on the channel, but in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.